Cecilia Point, Talitza Natkov for Musqueam. We're going to start things off in the right way with the protocol welcome from the three territories. I have my sisters from Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. They're going to come forward. They're going to come forward and introduce themselves. Islene, my sisters, I have the greatest respect for them. Audrey Siegel, you may have seen her advocating for the poor sleeping outside in Oppenheimer Park. My sister Carlene, on the front lines with the Sacred Trust, the, the Tsleil-Waututh Sacred Trust, protecting our waters. For those of you walking by who don't know what's going on today, you're enjoying beautiful Vancouver weather, clean air, clean beaches, clean water. We're here today to speak for those who can't speak for themselves, the four-legged and the ones who swim. coming out today. I know you would love to be at the beach or enjoying time with your families. Thank you for doing this work with us today. Osiem. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the unceded lands of the Musqueam people. It gives me feelings of great joy inside to be here with you today. My name is Audrey Siegel. I am from Musqueam and I am so proud to say that that is where my people are from. I am the grand <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I am the granddaughter of the late Stephen and Selena August. Why are we all here today again? We're here because we are warriors. We are warriors protecting the water, the land, the air. We're protecting all of our resources, our women, our children, our men. We're using our voices to make other people aware of what is going on. Day, knowing that I represent generations going back to the first sunrise. All of my ancestors, all of our ancestors stand here with us. We have a phrase, Natsamat Tshkwelewinst. We are of one heart and one mind. And when we gather in situations like this with good intentions to protect, we are becoming one heart and one mind. So to echo the words of my sister Cece, Haidzepka to each of you for taking your time, for spending your energy to be here today because this is important. The Chief Dan George, the Coast Salish Anthem, it's a song given to all to sing by Chief Dan George, and everybody who knows it, please join in. I sing it because it's a beautiful, soft song. It's like a lullaby. And in these times where we're having to fight and fight and fight, it's really nice to have something gentle.
Menziaya, Menzeno Kawelia Quiensna, Menzeno Kawelian Quolmosna. It is a beautiful day. I'm standing here on behalf of the ancestors that stand with me from the Squamish Nation, part of the unceded Coast Salish territory that we talk about and that we share. As the Rainbow Tribe, as the human race, I think we all have it in our heart and our spirit to stand as one in what we say in our languages and Chomo or not Samat, which was mentioned earlier, one mind, one heart, one spirit. We all move together as one and our energy will bring our message across and all of your ancestors stand behind you as well. And for that I raise my hands to each and every one of you. I think that when we come together as one, what we do in our language is we practice our Chiyoch and our Chiyoch is our ancestral law. And ancestral law comes from natural law and natural law is the wind the water the land the spirit everything that surrounds us you can't see it but you know it's there and we it is up to us as Cuomo people and our friends to stand together as one to do everything in our power to protect it that's why we are here and on behalf of my people nation of Squamish, I just want to raise my hands to you when you see us doing this. This is a high regard. This is called Kayachtin. Raising our hands to you to say thank you. Thank you for bringing your beautiful spirit over to this collection of circle of people to help us bring this message across today. And uh, it makes me think of a year ago when we came together to walk Georgia Street for Reconciliation Canada in the city of Vancouver, acknowledging that this is unceded Coast Salish territory. We all walk as one, one. On behalf of my people, my family, the Joseph family from Squamish Nation, my grandparents, the ancestors behind them, we all raise our hands in Kayach and say, Haichka, Hoicho, thank you. I Tanashkolo and Kutsi Kutsnala Ihui E, and the Ansakalot, and the Manas and Thaya It Siak Mat Slahot Siam, and the Emit Kwathan Sokalot Pas Slahot Siam. Haitsapka, Haitsapka, Mitsapuquilam, E, Sohotmish, E, Hamathquilam, E, Slewatoth Walmo. My dear friends and relatives, the feelings I have inside are really good to be with you here today. My ancestral name is Ansakalot. My parents are Ernie and Deanna George. My grandparents are the late hereditary chief John L. George, also known as the Right Honorable, and my grandmother is the late Dolly Lillian George. On behalf of my friends and relatives of the Musqueam and the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, welcome you here. We are so happy that you joined us here today. I raise my hands and thanks to the organizers for recognizing and carrying out this protocol. It's really important, and like my sister Donda shared, reconciliation is so important not only for the first nations and for the non first nations and our governments but for human beings relationship to the land there is so
There's a sign out here. Can you raise it? It says, there's no planet B. <laughs> like there's no plan B? There's a beautiful sign, there's no planet B. And that's why we are all here today, standing shoulder to shoulder to protect the environment that we call home, the communities that we call home, but also understanding the, the big picture that in those tar sands, they're wasting the water that you and I depend on. We might not use that water today or that impact on that water isn't affecting us today, but in this little one's lifetime, it will. And as Hwalmukh people, our chiyah, our, not, our teachings, our snowayah, tells us we are responsible for the environment right now because we have these little ones that are coming up behind us. And I was... These little ones over here too, I raised my hands and thanks when we were singing. They are sharing their instruments with us. Hi, Tsepka, thank you so much. I also want to recognize that today is um, the People's Climate March. It's also happening over there in New York City. When I was asked to be here today, I couldn't help but think about a year ago, the Philippine Islands were struck with that horrendous super typhoon or something like that. And at that time, the UN on climate change was happening in Warsaw, Poland. And the Philippine representative there came out with a beautiful, beautiful press release or uh, asking the world to understand our responsibilities to climate change. He was saying, we cannot call these natural disasters anymore. They are man-made. And the sooner, the sooner we as human beings reconcile us to the, that fact, the better. Because I don't want my granddaughter, 50 years from now, standing in this exact spot, fighting to protect her land, her water, and her air. We can do that now, you and I. You go home today and you share in the next little while with five people at your place of work, at your place of worship, where you recreate. Share with five people what you saw, what you heard, and what you felt here today. And challenge them to tell five more people. Because the apathy that citizens have toward our government has got to stop. We have had enough. Don't do it, who will? My granddaughters 50 years from now will be doing the same thing. You and I have got to do this job better and we can do it together. Strong ladies, strong women, strong voices. And I'd like to introduce Shirley Samples. I raise my hands to her. I know she hasn't slept week because I know she's been emailing me in the middle of the night and first thing in the morning so she must be exhausted. I, I really raise my hands to, to people like Shirley who, who bring everyone out here. And I also want to mention that Carlene's sister is in New York right now at the Climate March. <laughs> Shirley Sample. I hadn't really planned on speaking but when I saw the news feed today of New York City I just had to share with all of you all of the excitement, enthusiasm, and tears actually that started. They had 310,000 people. <laughs> 310,000 people, and I think that they were actually thinking that if they had 100,000, they would be happy. 
We had 310,000 people take over the streets of New York to tell the UN summit that we want change now. I really do. You know, when you start doing something like this, you, you really don't know where it's going to go. But you know how I really feel it, that in all of us, there's a part of us that knows that something is changing on our planet. There's something changing in our government. There's something changing in the decision uh, process that's happening. And a lot of times, you know, we're all busy in our lives, but they want to make our city the gateway to Asia to have bitumen shipped with absolutely no benefit to us. And we need to speak up because all of us know that that's not what we want. All of us know that our ocean, our shores, our beautiful coast, we don't need the risk. We have so much here to be thankful for. We have the future to look forward to, and that's why we're marching together today. We're gonna to march, we're gonna make a lot of noise, we're going to have be empowered by each other, we're gonna grow this movement so that the governments cannot ignore us. Thing I do want to say. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. So what I really like to say is the reason we have to march today, and the reason that you have to ask your friends to come out for the next march is that we have a Prime Minister who isn't even attending the UN Summit. He is in total denial of what is happening on our planet. There are so, there are so many people who are so vulnerable in this world. That's who we're marching for today. And in a, in a minute or two, we're going to have a moment of silence. They did that in New York City. We're doing that in recognition of all those um, ones in the um, you know, third world countries, a lot of the countries that can't grow their food anymore. We're going to have a moment of silence so that we can think about them and that we can, uh, that's where our energy needs to be. We need to be speaking up for each other, for each other, and that's why we're marching today. We're going to send a message to Harper. The climate change is real, and that we care, and we're going to do something about it. Right Thank on. you all for coming. Thank you. Way back there on Georgia Street. Oh, I'm really sorry. Pass the message back. We are going to have a moment of silence for all those lives, all the lives that have been lost in the last decade or so due to climate change. I want you to hold special in your hearts those people that have lost their lives in floods, hurricanes. Here we go. Creator, grandmothers and grandfathers, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the circle that you've gathered here together. We ask you to bless us with open hearts and open minds to carry on the work that has left for us to do. 
We hold up to you our elected officials, asking you to bless them with a kind heart. We're holding up to you those that cannot speak. We're asking you to give us the strength and courage to carry on with the workplace before us. For these and other intentions we have in our hearts, we leave with you today. All my relations. Some singing. <laughs> I'm so happy to have my girl here. And they're my girls too. <laughs> I love these ladies. They, uh, they come when they're, when they're called. And uh, they stood with us at Musqueam when we protected our burial site. And they came and sang for us. And I love them so much. Please enjoy some singing from a girl. Does that work? Hi. All of us have a song. In the ways of our people across Turtle Island, and that means all of North America, as many of our teachings talk about the fact that we are custodians to Mother Earth. I am not talking just about our First Nations or our Native American people. I'm talking about every person that is here and the intention you bring to being here. We all have a song. We all have a passion and a vision for acknowledging Mother Earth. In Cree means all my relations. And when we send our prayers, and when we talk about our relations, we talk about everyone, the four-legged, the two-legged, the winged ones, those in the water. We are McGurl, and we've traveled across Canada, New Zealand, that Rio Roja, and in Europe this past year uh, to share our music. This song is in Cree and English. It's called Gewin, Find Your Song. <laughs> Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going. Searching for your song, melody inside. Find out what is wrong. Make a moment. Make a moment. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea game. Journey all the way, I was right for you. Song inside your mind, make a win, make a win. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Woo! All of us has a song. All of us has a song. All of us has a tune. All of us has a tune. It's in our heart and in our bones. It's in our heart and in our bones. It's in our ways. It's up to you. Get your tea going, hey, hey. Get your tea going, hey, hey, get your tea going. Journey all the way, I was right for you. Song inside your heart, Nagamo win, Nagamo can get your tea going, hey, hey. Woo! All of us has a song, all of us has a tune. I'm part Clinkett as well, and I just want to share, in 2005, my mother was arrested for protecting the sacred headwaters, the Sakiva. They arrested 14 of our elders in, in full regalia. And today, I went up there this summer, broke my heart to see what's going on in our territory. I hear that the government issues 
permits for mining companies to go in there without even acknowledging or recognizing the territory they're on. They just give them these permits and they go in there and they do test drilling. No! It's our government. My elders, my mother, they're still there protecting our lands. Red Chris Mine, owned by Imperial Metals, is in our territory. So it breaks my heart to see this, but everyone working together, fighting and sending the message out there, we need to protect our land, we need to support each other, hold each other up. Our fish, our environment is important to all of us. Not just First Nations, all of us. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, wow, they're fantastic. And uh, I met Una Ann's mother, and she, she also took time to come down and stand with us at Musqueam. So uh, the, these women warriors, they're, they're leading the way for us. It's my great honor. Do I get a step up here? <laughs> it's my great honor to acknowledge the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. The Union of BC Indian Chiefs started off as the Native Brotherhood. They were the original voices to speak for us, for First Nations and our rights. Today we have Chief Bob Chambers. Chamberlain, pardon me, I usually call him Chief Bobby C, so that's why I forget his last name. But Chief Bobby, you, you see him everywhere. You see him going to Ottawa with the Tsilkotin. You see him up in Taltan. You see him with the Honeyguatin. He's everywhere. <laughs> and he, uh, he speaks for the fish to keep our fish clean. I mean, once our, our fish and our water are gone, that's it. Like people don't realize that. I don't know. I don't know what our government's thinking. We're all going to live in uh, space capsules somewhere and eat like powdered food. I really don't know what they think. But as the saying goes, you can't eat money. So um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to let Chief Bobby speak for himself. He's he's so accomplished, and I and I I really raise my hands to him, Chief Bobby. Nu gram already gaes and lacha kuchosu to new kuchatmis. Muskamak dao deno. Hagela kasla koselis lo kalatli. Slave with tooth, squatmish, musquim, la kuchtamas, we la megans, none will call us kwatdala. My traditional name is already, and as is mentioned, I'm the Vice President of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. The one thing that our organization has been pursuing since its creation was a fair and just settlement to the land claim issue here in the province of British Columbia for First Nations people. <laughs> Having to deal with a lopsided, visionless government like we have today is nothing new for First Nations people in our long history. Time and again that we have come up against governments that want to minimize, deny, delay, distract, and do anything, anything at all to maintain status quo and run over the top of the human rights of First Nations people here in Canada. It's a shameful thing. And we have Harper's government, he's in New York right now, and he's not going to attend the meeting where there's going to be 125 other leaders from around the world. It is so shameful that our leader cannot go and attend a discussion talking about something that only pertains to the benefit of this planet. Because as was pointed out, there is no B planet. There is only this one. And what he is doing is he's sending one of his ministers in, Susan Gluckach, where she is going to be held accountable for the inactions and the disregard that the Harper government perpetuates in relationship to the greenhouse gas emissions here in Canada. Time and again, we learn of more atrocities this government allows to continue. When you turn and look at what is happening up in Fort McMurray, you look at the, the tar sands and the greenhouse gas emissions that go unregulated. They go unregulated and I say that that is beyond anything in my mind that I can think of as acceptable, that the government must step up and take on the primary contributor to the greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. Take care of your own backyard because the world demands it now. It is 
is so very good to see so many of you gather here on a beautiful sunny day on the last summer of uh, the last weekend of summer and yet we found time and places in our hearts to be right here to stand with people that have the same thoughts and important uh, concerns that we want heard there is many people in New York there's a good group of people here in Vancouver that are saying to the Harper government that enough is enough it's enough uh, time has gone by where you must embrace the realities of global warming and must lead Canada to a responsible place within the United Nations to actually do something, to act. I was reading in the paper this morning that Harper says their government is going industry by industry to examine the policies and regulations to perhaps make changes. This is a classic delay, deny, and distract approach by government so they can say to these cameras and to the world, we've got a process where we're going to look at our belly buttons for a number of years and our status quo to continue so his friends that make up the corporate world that have one concern, which is the bottom line on a spreadsheet and profit taking over top of the very planet's health that we rely upon to live. But the Union of East Indian Chiefs this past week, we're very fortunate to have um, David Suzuki come and speak with our Chiefs in Assembly. And I found him to be a fascinating man. And he spoke of how he had met with the CEO of a major energy company. And he said, let's find some things that we can agree on to start with. Of course, the guy looked pretty skeptical, as you can imagine. And David Suzuki says the human body can go three minutes without oxygen before you die. So I think we agree that air is important. <laughs> we went on further to say the human body can live for three days without water. So I think we can agree that fresh water and oxygen are important things for human beings on this planet. We must move past the denial, the blindness and the deafness of our governments in Canada to really understand our involvement and what we must change to save this planet. And I don't say that lightly, because when we look and see the global warming that's going on, we look and see all the erratic weather patterns and behaviors and storms, it's not because we have social media and better reporting, it's because the occurrence of them are happening a lot more than they once did. And there is a cause, and it is what our governments are turning a blind eye to. Now, as was mentioned, Chief Bobby C, that's my Twitter handle. How many of you have a phone in your pocket? Right? This is how we're going to change the world, right here. Social media. Do not fall prey to the corporate media monsters that are going to minimize your message that are going to perpetuate the government's viewpoint of only wanting profits for their shareholders. It's time for Canadians to unite, First Nations, non-First Nations. We as First Nations people in Canada have a very unique place in terms of the Constitution and Supreme Court of Canada rulings. And as a result of that... say that one more time, a unique place in the Canadian Constitution and the Supreme Court of Canada rulings. These are very major pieces of democracy in Canada that are giving direction to the government which has continually disregarded, minimized, walked away from, and I would say to all of you that this is completely unacceptable from a democratic process, but also from a human rights pro uh, perspective for First Nations people in Canada. And in order for us to make the changes that we all dearly need, I would say the First Nations are very well placed to take this fight on with the strongest foundation and principles to move forward where we want the land to be intact, we want the land to be there for all of our generations as we enjoy it today. <laughs> And in order for us to be successful within this society that is now Canada, 
We need each and every one of you. We love Macon's number Guanama. We are one people. And that is what I would say that we need to focus on is unity. And how can we best support the ones who are best positioned to fight this government and its disregard for the environment. Again, I cast a hand for the election. Oil tankers on the sailing sea. No oil tankers on the coast of BC. No oil tankers on the sailing sea. No oil tankers on the coast of BC. No oil tankers on the which actually dates from the world, Second World War, but we have slightly different words. and it costs a lot of money. So I would like to ask all the people that are collecting donations to come into the center here and we're going to circulate through the crowd. And people paid for this out of their own pockets. They paid for the printing, they paid for the banners. So we're, if you can possibly, you know, just 
help out with a donation, it would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. We're all David Suzuki also said, the earth is our mother. And they did admit that they had benefited financially from the tar sands, but they said, now we have enough. So development never understands that you just take what you need and move on. That's our way. As Carlene said, and as the sign said, there's no planet B. So I'm going to introduce Lynn Quamby from SFU. Pardon me? Okay. Go first. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to introduce Shirley one more time, and then Lynn Quamby from SFU. Okay, everybody, I know I'm getting the feeling and the message that you want to march. <laughs> speeches and the things take longer than we thought and I apologize for that. I want you to make the decision whether we should march now or we can speak, listen to one more speaker. Okay, one more because she's a, she's a uh, SFU professor. She's totally into climate change. She really gets what's happening in the world. And I think let's give her her five minutes. <laughs> then, we're gonna take, then we're gonna take this huge banner down. We're gonna walk over towards Georgia Street. As soon as the banner is at the front, we're gonna ask all the drummers to come behind us. And then we'd really, really love it if all the youth would follow right behind. To me, this is what this is for. This is to ignite our young people. Yeah. It's their future. So I hope that they'll come to the front of the march. So I'm going to introduce Lynn Crombley. She'll have a five minutes, and then we're taking the banner down, and then we're going to hit the streets. We're going to make a hell of a noise, and we're going to have fun. And then after, I don't know if anyone announced it, but we have five DJs lined up with our music system to rock this area till seven, till six o'clock tonight. So come back to the, to the plaza, talk a bit, let's make connections, and let's really, really make a difference. Thanks, everybody. Look at you all. What are you doing out here? Have you not been paying attention? to the propaganda and the misinformation. There's nothing to worry about. We don't have to worry about climate change. Our government has been telling us it's not a concern. We can approve pipelines and coal mines and coal ports and LNG processing plants. We don't need to consider pipelines. We don't need to consider climate change. And the reason we don't need to consider climate change is because it's not really a problem. It's, it's those damn extreme radical foreign funded environmentalists that are just exaggerating everything. Unfortunately, we know that there's well, fun, well established science that tells us that climate change is happening right now and it's getting worse. We know that there are people around the world already suffering from extreme climate and extreme weather events. We know that oceans are acidifying. Our beloved Salish Sea is so out of balance that oyster larvae and scallop larvae can no longer develop properly. We know that we need to be turning away from using fossil fuels. We know all those things and we know a whole bunch more. So who is it that's been telling us that we don't have to worry about anything? Was this, this is our government? Did, did, just a minute, don't we elect these people to look after the common good? What's, what's up? Clearly, our democracy is in trouble. Christy, Christy Clark and Stephen Harper are listening to corporate persons, not to citizens. stop this fossil fuel madness, I'm going to give you one quick example and then we're going to move on. So a few weeks ago, the Vancouver Port Authority approved a new coal port at Fraser Surrey Docks. That is
is such a bad deal that every single port up the west coast of the United States turned it down. And we said yes. You know what we get for that port? We get 40 jobs in British Columbia. 25 jobs at Fraser, Fraser uh, Surrey Port and 15 on Texida Island. That's what we get. And you know what the price of that is? The price of that is the equivalent amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere as all of the cars on the road in British Columbia every year for every year of the life of that port. Are we going to accept yes as an answer? No! Yeah, I didn't think so. So I have a list here. I can, I can kind of hear people saying, okay, but what can I do? I go out to rallies and it feels kind of like futile. Like what happens from that? So I have a list of 10 things and I have lots of details, but to, in the interest of getting us moving because everybody's melting, I'm going to do it really fast. So you ready? Here we go. Number one, be tuned in. The Harper and Clark governments are very good at sneaking approvals through. They don't necessarily show up in the mainstream media. Get on mailing lists. Find out, connect with environmentalists, connect with activists, find out what's going on. Number two, divest. If you're fortunate enough to have money to invest, make sure it's not in fossil fuels. Number three, do your thing. Do whatever it is you do, but do it for change. If you're a teacher, teach about climate change. Teach about social injustice. Teach about inequities. Um, teach about all the things we need to change. And if you are uh, a member of a labor, labor union, start helping. Talk to your unions. Plan for transition that needs to be made. Number four, pick a cause. We can't do it all. Everybody needs to be doing something. There's so much to do. F focus on inequity. Look at um, problems with democracy. Campaign for minimum wage. Uh, learn about basic uh, incomes, tax structures. Find a political candidate you can support. On and on and on. I'm going to leave all those out. You guys can find a cause. Number five, support others who have chosen a different cause or a different approach. We need to support one another. <laughs> Number six, change our behaviors. Every little bit helps. Fly less, eat less meat, um, drive less, buy less. You know, every little bit. It's not going to change the world, but it will empower you. And by being empowered, that will change the world. <laughs> seven talk about climate change not just to each other go to work go to the dinner table with the big family dinners go everywhere you socialize talk about climate change make it an issue number seven do not accept the fallacy that the economy trumps everything number nine Support those who do direct action. You can take a hot meal out to somebody sitting in the mud in a rainy day in front of a bulldozer at Fraser Surrey Docks. And if you decide you want to participate in direct action, please be safe. Please be trained in nonviolent resistance. I'm going to give you a website. It's a really easy one. TSSU.ca. You can go there and find a wonderful instruction manual for how to be safe when you do civil disobedience. And number 10, this is my final point. I'm just about done here. This, I think, is a really important message to all the security people that are here, to the RCMP, to the undercover national security folks. <laughs> this is a message to all of you. I ask you to recognize the deep frustrations that have built up in the face of this massive failure on the part of our government. I ask you to pay attention to your own moral compass. Don't allow yourselves to become provocateurs. Don't let that happen. Remember who the real villains are.
And when you come face to face with an angry young person chained to a bulldozer and they're yelling at you and they are filled with hate, don't react personally. Have compassion. Remember their pain. Remember they are frightened. They are angry. This is their future. Treat them with compassion and treat them with care. Be gentle. Be gentle with them. And be gentle with us because I will be out there with them. Thank you.
first I had to beat my dad. Thank you. 